And we're back in my garage. So today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to go in depth on how the uh, gas-fired furnace works, particularly an 80% gas-fired furnace. Uh, and we're just going to kind of quickly go over what's called the sequence of operation. And the sequence of operations is actually very important when it comes to diagnosing a furnace. If you don't know what that's all about, well, it makes it a whole lot harder. Um, but once you know the sequence of operation, you won't have to rely on the idiot light, <coughs> diagnostic light. So anyway, here we go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the very first stage of the sequence of operation, and that is going to be the call for heat. So what is the call for heat? Well, the call for heat is when you grab your thermostat here, uh, of course it's attached to the wall, and uh, you're going to go ahead and flip her over to heat, like that, and you're going to crank up your temperature, just like that. That's our call for heat. Now, what does that do in the thermostat? Well, the thermostat's got some wires connected to it. Um, this is, uh, and this, this is the general colors. I mean, the colors are always going to be different, but generally speaking, this is what they should be. Um, just kind of depends on who installed it. So, uh, you want to know what these are. So, uh, W, or white, is going to be your heat. Um, yellow is going to be, or, or Y, is going to be your cooling. Uh, R, or red, is going to be your 24 volt. Your blue is generally going to be your common. And your, your, your green is going to be G, which is going to be your fan. So the way these thermostats are wired, you got 24 volts always going into them. Right? The only thing that's pretty much connected all the time is going to be C, and that's just to power up your thermostat uh, for these newer guys down here. Um, but basically, these are all going to be switches inside, and these are going to be normally opened. So, when you set your temperature on that thermostat, what it's going to do, when you turn on the heat, and you set the temperature, and the temperature is just right, it's going to actually connect these two together for heat. See? So you're going to have R going to W. So that W, that 24 volts, is going to run back to your circuit board here, to the W terminal. And that's going to tell this guy, oh, I want heat. So it's going to start its process. All right. Now, same thing works with cooling. If you're calling for cooling, the thermostat's going to take these two wires and connect them together. And that's going to send power to the Y terminal on your circuit board here. And that's going to tell it to turn the fan on. And you'll have another wire going to the condenser, which will close the, uh, the contactor on the compressor. Um, and then, same thing with fan. It's going to take, when you call for fan only, it's going to put these two together like that. And that's going to do fan. Now, when you want to test for this stuff, what you're going to do is if you're calling for heat, you should be getting 24 volts between uh, W and C. So if you're getting 24 volts, that means the thermostat's calling. Um, so if you call for heat and nothing happens, first thing you want to do is if that make sure the thermostat says it's actually calling for heat. Uh, if it is, you want to check W and C. Uh, if you're getting 24 volts, that means you're receiving a call. Um, do make note of this because sometimes there are uh, circuit boards that will delay. So it'll receive a call and it might wait, you know, like 90 seconds before it does anything. So, you know, uh, of course that depends on the manufacturer. But anyway, um, so yeah. So anyway, that's how you check that. Uh, now, if you call for heat and nothing happens, um, you're not getting voltage, that doesn't necessarily mean it could be a bad thermostat. All right, so then in a situation where you've called for heat from your thermostat, but nothing's happening, you're not getting 24 volts at the circuit board, there's a possibility that your thermostat could just have failed. Either the thermostat's bad, or it could even be your thermostat wires are no good. So the best thing to do is pull this guy off the wall, pull out these wires, right? And what you want to do is you want to verify that these wires are good. Because if you replace the thermostat and the wires aren't good, it's still not going to work. And that's just going to make you look dumb. So what you want to do is you pull off the face of your, your thermostat. You get the wires exposed. You take your little jumper wires and you can get these anywhere. And what you're going to do is you're going to put one on your W. And you're going to put one on your R. And now we've created a bridge between R and W. So that should send the 24 volts from the uh, red wire all the way into the W wire, which will send the power to the W, which will call for heat. 
Um, now, if you do this and you check between W and C and you're getting no voltage, well, then that means the wires are no good. That means that the power is not getting to it, so it's not even receiving the call, so that's why it's not doing anything. Now, if it does turn on and you throw your thermostat back on and nothing happens, then it's most likely is a bad thermostat. And uh, you can you can check these things if you can figure out if you can figure out what prong does what you can you know do continuity tests on them. Um, they're getting harder and harder to do that nowadays because none of this stuff is labeled on what it is. So you know now if you are getting the 24 volts to the system and nothing absolutely nothing is happening, uh, well then you know you may have a problem. Now of course you want to make sure you are getting 24 volts from your transformer which is this guy here so usually you want to make sure uh, you're getting the best the quickest way is going between R and C on here if you're getting 24 volts then you're good that means you're getting high voltage because if there was no high voltage you wouldn't get any voltage period um, but yeah that's the quickest way or you can always check it directly from the transformer uh, it doesn't really matter but this is the fastest way because then it just kind of checks everything so that's pretty much um, the call for heat. So that's your first stage of the, your sequence of operation is your call for heat. So all those things can be problems just from the first stage. All right. So that's pretty much what it comes down to. And um, it could also be, you know, programming issues with the thermostats. And the thermostats are getting more complex. You have the Nest. You have the, the Ecobee. You know, you got the Honeywell Lyric. I mean, they're basically computers. You know, it's like a little cell phone now. Um, but sometimes it's a programming issue. You know, Lennox has the M30, and that's a pretty cool thermostat, but, man, it's it's got a lot of settings in there that can get set up wrong. So, And, of course, you know, your homeowner is going to mess with it and not really know what they're doing. So you want to make sure you take the time and learn. You know, if you can, if you get a new thermostat, ask your GM if you can take one home and play with it, learn how to use it, you know. Most of these time with these new thermostats, usually it's just a setting. Um, but anyway, so that's pretty much your first stage is a uh, the call for heat, and those are all the problems that could go wrong with them, and those are the ways you can the things you can do to uh, to test them. So uh, on for next week for our next video, we're going to talk about the uh, first uh, the second step of the sequence of operation, which is going to be a call for. Uh, which is not the call for heat, but it's actually the first thing that happens after that is your inducer, which is one of these guys. Uh, we're going to tie in the pressure switch because they work together. Uh, but basically, we're going to go over all that. So, so your sequence of operation goes as followed. Step one, call for heat. Step two, inducer draft motor energizes. Step three, your pressure switch closes. Step four, your igniter turns on. Uh, step five, your gas valve opens, which creates ignition. Step six, your flame sensor detects the flame. And then your, um, you know, then it waits for a little while. And then your final step, seven, your blower motor energizes and turns on. This entire time you have 24 volts running through your safety circuit. The safety circuit consists of a high limit, possibly an auxiliary limit, and rollout switches. So those are energized the entire time. Uh, so if for some reason any of those are tripped, they open up and then uh, the uh, gas will be shut off and typically the blower motor will run until those switches are reset. So that's pretty much the full sequence of operation. Today we covered the first one, which was the call for heat. Uh, next week we're going to be covering the second and third stage, which is our inducer draft motor and our pressure switch. We're going to go over how that works, how it sometimes doesn't work, and how to diagnose it and how to fix it. And we're going to do that until we get through all the stages. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. I hope it's not too different. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell notification and comment. Let me know what a horrible technician I am or if you have any further questions about how any of this stuff works. Um, always looking, looking for uh, feedback. So thanks again for watching. Have a good one.